Hello everybody, Rex here. Okay, well I'm going to be continuing on this portrait here. Uh, this is number nine, I believe. And so without any further ado, let's just get right into the lesson. Welcome back to those who have been watching this series from the beginning and for those who have not I would highly recommend that you go to the very beginning and start from there so at least you can see how this drawing has progressed these many months yes many months because I haven't had a whole lot of time to spend on it with everything that goes on here However, with that said, welcome to number nine of this particular series on drawing this guy with great hair, which most people refer to as a portrait of Jesus. And I believe that the original reference photo here is intended to be the, I think, a painting of Jesus. And I've been told it was from uh, I think some young person who I guess has an incredible amount of talent. Anyway, I don't know the history about this reference photo. And I want to say right up front, because I know that there's been a couple of people made comments uh, that, you know, I was uh, taking somebody's work or something. Uh, can't remember exactly what it is, but the claim is I make no claim as being the originator of this image. I draw what I see. My reference photos are of people, mostly, sometimes animals. Uh, and there's been a couple of things like a room and uh, a glass of water. But other than that, I draw from photos. That's how I got started. That's what I'm doing here. So uh, regardless of whose reference photo this happens to be, just note that I just draw from a reference photo. That's it. And I'm just showing you how I do it. It's neither the right way or the wrong way. It's just my way. And I'm sure I have habits that will need to be broken because I've not been doing this very long. I'm now in year five, I believe, uh, since I started drawing. Um, my beginning was a stick figure. So uh, this is me today. And, uh, you know, as time goes by, I hope I get a little better at it. Anyway, I'm sharing, so please take it for the spirit it's being offered. Um, now, with that said, uh, I'm just simply taking a charcoal pencil here and uh, going over some areas uh, that I think needs a little more refining, a little darkening. Here's a 9XXB pencil uh, that I'm going to go ahead and start uh, working on the details of the skin tone. You can see that on the right side of the face here, well, it's his left, our right, um, that it's in, it's in shadow. It's very dark. And it's even very difficult for me to see as I'm drawing uh, any real details in this area. And I'm just working to get it darker because if you'll notice, the reference is darker. So... I want to do that with my drawing, and that's what I'm going to do here. Now, as the uh, warning showed at the very beginning of this video, uh, this is not going to be in time lapse, folks. This will not be in time lapse at all. So, if for those of you who uh, appreciate it not being in time lapse, here it is. For those of you who like time lapse, uh, the YouTube controls your settings allows for you to run this all the way up to two times speed. So you have control. You can either run this at two times speed, one and a half speed, so forth, or you can just move the scroll bar and just jump to any time period within this video. It is a long video, and that's what happens when you don't have time lapse. So I'm trying to satisfy the desires of two different groups here. Those who like time lapse and those who do not. All right. I'm also kind of uh, adjusted the audio on this thing uh, because uh, uh, it's been said I'm a little too low. 
Um, so I'm still learning, you know, messing around with this editing software here. It's like, you know, you have to learn all these technologies and at the same time, you know, do whatever it is that you're trying to present. So now with this 9XX pencil here, which is a General's 9XX pencil, this is a hybrid pencil. It's it's a mixture of graphite and carbon. Now, sometimes I get comments people say well all pencil all graphite is carbon yeah i get it you know i mean we got we're, we're carbon too uh that's not the point there are pencils that sp are specifically stated to be carbon and they have different characteristics than pencils that are specified as graphite or charcoal which all are from the carbon family However, the carbon pencils, such as General's carbon uh, pencil, I forgot it was like the number five or something like that, um, is about the darkest pencil I've ever come across. And it is a charcoaly like, sounds like chocolatey, but it's charcoal est, uh, in that it's just this really pitch black uh, material. So, anyway, not to be mistaken with graphite, which is kind of a, oh, I don't know, a grayish, mid-tonish kind of tone to it in comparison to charcoal, which is a, a really pitch dark black. So charcoal, carbon, and graphite, the three main things I pretty much differentiate based on what they print on those pencils and packages. So I'm using the 9XXB here. Uh, which is the hybrid it has the two which one of the nice things about using the hybrid is it allows me to cross over too. like on his left side here to us right side to him is graphite and then on the right is mostly charcoal so using a hybrid pencil like the 9xsb makes the two live together quite nicely i find all right, so I'm working on some details here. You can see that on the reference photo, these are little darker tone areas, and I'm addressing that right now with this 9XXB pencil. And I'm really trying to make sure that I get the details exactly as possible. Whether I get it exact or not really isn't the point. The tip I want to give to you all is you try to attempt to emulate the exact details because whether or not you can fully achieve that, it will make a big difference in your final product. It will come out to be more realistic. If you ignore the details as being unimportant, trust me, you will not be happy with the final product if you're going for realism sure it'll be a great drawing i'm sure but you just will fall short i i found this out several times you just want to don't judge the details don't judge one detail as being more important than another i couldn't stress that more just get in there and really try to spot things that aren't necessarily going to jump out at you they could be subtle but you want to get those in there you'd be amazed at when the audience whoever it is that's viewing your artwork they look at it they may look at it like from a uh, sky perspective like way above the forest and they look at the whole forest but then you also get those who will zero in on small things and they they will go wow look got that detail in there and that detail. and it gives it the ooh ah factor okay not to be mistaken with you know alvin and the chipmunks and the ooh ah he ah, ah ding bang and you know that you know that sound right okay so you can see that i'm trying to pick out the just the subtle highlights, the shape of those highlights, how it curves. You see that very light mark I just finished putting in there? I'm now surrounding it with a little darker uh, line. And you can look on the reference and you can see that there. And I'm really trying to get those little details in there. So 
that's what I'm doing right now with this 9xx pencil. So anyway, let's just kick back a little bit here, um, watch this for a little while. I'm not going to say anything else for right now until something else comes up that I'm going to do a little differently. But for right now, a little background music. Okay, what you see me doing right here is uh, lighting up uh, the area on his cheek using the kneaded eraser. This is why it's so important that when you lay down your charcoal, your graphite, that you do so lightly. Uh, this allows you to later uh, come in and lighten areas because you're going to want to kind of do this uh, quite a bit. You're going to go in, you're going to darken areas, then you're going to want to uh, start to lighten up areas. And I'm I'm trying to uh, mimic what I see in the reference photo. So uh, basically, you know, I, I know I repeat myself a lot saying the same thing, but that's basically how I do it. I, I just take a look at what the reference has, and then I try to see the difference in tone, and, and I try to mimic that. And, and, and at this time now, I'm blending. Uh, blending is kind of, uh, using the Q-tip here, it's kind of like uh, a way of lighting lighting up the area because it actually takes some of the material off the paper and it also allows you to move it around a little bit as well give a little smoother effect so uh, it has multiple uh, effects when you do that back to kneading again with the kneaded eraser Okay, now again, I'm in, coming in here with a 9XXB pencil, that's the, uh, the hybrid pencil, and uh, just carefully just drawing uh, ever so lightly, darkening the tones, uh, because when you look at the reference photo on his cheek there, you do not see one tone, you see multiple tones. You go from very dark to slightly less dark and even slightly less than that and and just you know trying to capture that you you just kind of patiently want to go and and move that pencil as you're looking at that reference just move it and add to certain areas and and uh, just try to try to just uh, it's hard to explain but try to just see those differences in tone maybe you have to squint your eyes to, to see it and uh, you know sometimes I'll, I'll, I'll think I see it I'll draw it in and realize that it didn't quite see it right and and so you know it's a matter of adjusting and readjusting and so forth but you know I'm just explaining what I'm doing here is I'm getting that that texture of that skin and that tone in and, and anywhere that I see a, a light just a minor difference in tone like like right now uh, I, I see kind of this line thing going up well, it's like three lines or something it's so subtle but uh, I see it so I'm going to put it in there and then if it comes in too too dark I'll lighten it up later on but you know I just keep going back and forth uh, doing it that way
point out something very interesting um, that I've been noticing is that when I'm drawing with my lighting and so forth the darkness of the reference photo compared to the darkness of my drawing is to my eyes different than when I'm recording it on film or well, actually we don't use film but you know digitally when we record it on the camera and I'm looking at it here on the monitor as I'm narrating this and and I could see how different the lighting is on both the reference and the drawing the drawing being much lighter than, than the reference but when you're looking at it with your eyes and not through the lens of a camera it is different and so what I find interesting is I could sit here and watch this uh, since I've already drawn this uh, earlier and now I'm, I'm recording over what I did um, I can look at this and I can spot things like oh you know I'm, I'm going to need to work on the thickness of the mustache here and, and I can see that uh, you know this area needs to be a little straighter or darker or whatever so uh, that might be something worth doing I think it is to actually film yourself drawing and then play it back on your computer monitor or whatever you have uh, as a way of helping you spot things that maybe you're not spotting with your own eyes. So that was just not something that I thought I'd throw in there because uh, it's an observation that uh, I'm making here uh, as I'm watching this.
Okay, now I've switched up to a very dark charcoal pencil, the, the Primo Elite. And uh, my main focus for this pencil is going to be the beard that's in the uh, shadow, the very dark uh, part of the beard. Now, in this video, you're going to see um, more detail in the shadow area of the beard than what it's going to end up when I'm finished because in the reference the beard in the shadow area does ha doesn't have hardly any uh, detail at all it's just pitch dark pitch black and that's what I'm going to uh, attempt to achieve is exactly what I see in the reference but I won't be finishing the beard in this video because it, it got very long um, so how you see this beard throughout this video uh, you know don't prejudge it it's not finished and it won't be finished for at least another video or two so um, but I'm going to get the dark area in I'm gonna blend it I'm gonna go back in again but you're still going to be able to see strokes of my pencil pencil in the shadow area which I'm going to end up uh, blending out or uh, filling in with the charcoal pencil as time goes on so uh, just want to give you a heads up as to what my plan is and uh, uh, the steps that I'm going to be taking so right now I'm just focusing on the uh, shadowed areas of the beard I'll start drawing in the whiskers uh, even in the uh, highlighted areas but uh, it will be far from finished in this particular video so watch it all the way through see uh, how far I take it but it will not be complete in this video because I, I like to do layers upon layers to give that hair uh, that uh, that look of being full and so I'll, I'll have to be working in between the hairs with shadow areas and so forth which I will not be getting to in this particular video
I think I need to point out something very important here. What I'm doing here is I'm not attempting to draw hair. This, this is not me drawing hair for the beard. This is me laying down pencil strokes in the direction that I see the hair moving. But these lines are not representative of hair. And that is important for, for you to know. Because again, I intend to blend this in, then add more, blend it in. And I'm going to end up with a very, very dark area where you will not see these strokes like you're seeing them now, as I mentioned even earlier. But I just wanted to point out that while it may look like I'm putting in hairs, that's not what I'm doing. I'm actually putting down charcoal that I'm going to need to move around, blend, and, and then start taking highlights out of it. So uh, I always like to draw or lay down my uh, graphite or my charcoal in the direction of whatever the pattern is that I'm drawing. So in this case, since it's a beard and everything's moving downwards in, in like a vertical or just offset slightly off vertical, um, I'm drawing those in there as if, you know, you, you would say, well, that's hair that you're drawing. No, that's not hair that I'm drawing. Um, I'm just doing pencil strokes that I'm going to end up blending and then I'm going to be erasing some of it out. When the hair really starts to show, especially in the highlight areas, is when I start to put the shading in between what should be hair to give it that appearance of hair and fullness and so forth. And then I'm going to use my eraser or I'm going to use frisket tape uh, with a sharp object to pull out uh, hairs or what will look like hairs to give it that uh, illusion.